So I've been wanting to post this story for a while. My kids are tired of hearing about it, and I'll try not to ramble too much. Oh, and I was about 16 or so, and the instructor in the story was in his 50s maybe. Don't know for sure. Everyone's old when you're 16. When I was in high school, you would take a driver's education class at some point. It basically went over the manual and basic rules of the road. Plus a special viewing of red asphalt, faces of death, but with car accidents. Once you passed that, you needed to find a local driver's training school to teach you the hands-on part. So that's what we did. And one night, my instructor shows up to get me for our lesson. I've had chronic back pain since I was 16, and I mentioned something about my back hurting. He had me turn around, put my arms across my chest. He lifted me up from the back to crack it. Weird? Maybe a little? A few lessons in, it's already dark out, and he takes me to this spooky back road in the next town over. Every time I began to drift to one side of the road, he would put his hand on the steering wheel and correct me. But after a couple times, he would correct the wheel then put his hand on my thigh. Now, I was a very shy kid and teenager, and I hated speaking up, even for myself. But I knew this was not a good situation. Every time he corrected my will, he put his hand closer to my crotch. So, this is going on for about 5 to 10 minutes. And in my head, I'm screaming at myself, Say something, you have to. So, I gather it up all of my courage, and finally managed to say, Can you please move your hand? It's distracting me. His hand moved away as fast as humanly possible. So how is this a creepy encounter? Well, I finished my lessons and got my license, and a couple years later I was reading the newspaper, and I found an article about a driver's training instructor who got arrested for molesting his students. Lo and behold, I recognized the name and picture, and it was the same guy. If I had not spoke up, I may have been one of those girls. I'm in my high school's band class. I play the flute. There was this one kid who played the tuba. Let's call him Quentin. Quentin seemed like a typical nerdy band kid. He was short, wore glasses, and always smelled a bit off. I did go out of my way to be nice to him, since he seemed like he was lonely and didn't really talk to anyone else in the class. And that was the biggest mistake of my life. When I did talk to him, Quentin was obviously not the best at social interaction. He wouldn't stop bringing up Reddit-type memes with Keanu Reeves and WW2 memes. He was like a walking Reddit stereotype. Still, I indulged his taste because I felt bad for him. I stopped going out of my way to talk to him when he started not so subtly flirting with me. At first, he seemed like a typical on the libtards conservative, but that oddly seemed to change when I told him I was a leftist. He legit started following leftist Instagram accounts and reposting their post on his story. He would go up randomly and ask if I read a theory, which I have, obviously, but he couldn't name any he's read. He even got in a vocal argument with some conservative learning kid over something stupid, just so I could hear him argue on my side as if that would somehow make me fall in love with him. Quentin would not leave me alone. So one of my friends told him to knock it off. One day in class, he asked me out in front of everyone. He said, I know you like me back. You want to go on a date? I have absolutely no idea how he got the idea that I liked him back. I told him no thank you. This didn't stop him. My aforementioned friend who was sitting next to me said, she said no thank you. Quentin glanced at me, merely saying, I know you're the only reason she's saying no. When asked what he meant by this, he said, It's obviously you. 
and all her other friends are just jealous of her. That's why you're forcing her to pretend not to be into me. Because you can't handle the thought of her having a boyfriend. That's why you reported me for the harassment, and she didn't. My mom worked for the PTA, you know. I actually kind of laughed at the absurdity of this. And my friend did too. Quentin took us not... Quentin took us not immediately shutting him down as a confrontation. That he was right. He left saying, I'll find a way to your heart eventually. He texted me later that night asking me out again, which I of course turned him down. He kept saying things like, you don't have to keep pretending for them. I know you're really into me. Eventually, I blocked him, hoping this would get the message to him, but of course it didn't. When I came to school the next morning, I was greeted with him yelling at my friend for forcing her to block me. They almost got on a full-on physical fight, which surprised me because Quentin is about 5'7 and skinny, and there's no way he could take my buff 5'10 male friend on in a fight. A few days later, a guy I had a crush on for a while texted me. He says he got my number from a friend and apologized if he came off as creepy, but he really wanted to see me. Of course, I was happy to do this, not only because I liked him, but also I figured having a boyfriend besides Quentin would get rid of his illusion that my friends are the reason I'm not giving him the time or day. Although I was a bit worried that Quentin would react badly to this, but I reassured myself that he couldn't really do anything since all my friends know about him. We decided to meet up in our local park. I noticed he was taking a while to show up when I got a tap on my shoulder. It was Quentin. I immediately froze and I asked him what he was doing there. He told me, Hmm, just enjoying the outdoors. What are you doing here? I told him I was meeting up with a guy and that he'd be here any minute. Nolan, right? That was the name of the guy I was meeting. How did you know? I asked him. I was starting to get creeped out. He held up his phone with text on it. Quentin had been pretending to be Nolan the whole time. I immediately asked him what the fuck he was doing. And he said, It's okay. This way you can finally confess your feelings to me. What do you mean? Your friends aren't here. They can't force you to say no this time. Come on. I know how you really feel about me, just say it. I told him in no uncertain terms that I was not interested in him at all and never would be. But this still didn't convince him. He still thought that this was somehow my friend's doing and that deep down I really did have feelings for him. He just kept pestering me over and over, saying I didn't have a logical reason for turning him down. Eventually I just left and got into my car. He tried following me to my car, but thankfully, I was able to get in and lock the door before he tried any funny business. The next day, I tried reporting him to the principal, but once again, they said there was nothing they could do since he hadn't actually touched me or broken any laws or school rules. That day, I got a text from one of my friends with a link to a Reddit account. I'm not going to link it because it might violate Reddit rules. There's no way it wasn't Quentin's. It was chock full of posts on advice, subreddits on how to get a girl to like you back if her friends are forcing her not to, along with complaints about women not being attracted to short men. One of the posts was even asking if it was a good idea to catfish a girl in order for her to safely confess her feelings to him. My blood turned cold reading this. Even though everyone on those subs was telling him he was in the wrong, he refused to listen and just called everyone who disagreed with him, which was pretty much everyone, a troll. Then came graduation. I was hoping he'd have finally let go of his obsession with me after the park. When my name was called up as I was getting my diploma, I heard him yell, my name, I love you. I got a major secondhand embarrassment from this. As did pretty much everyone else there, I'm sure. After the ceremony was over, I saw him yelling at his parents saying, I don't want to talk to anyone tonight. My night's been ruined already. They were begging him to at least talk to his relatives. 
who traveled all the way from out of state to see him, but he just stormed off crying, like he expected me to jump into his arms. That happened just a few days ago. I'll update you guys if he does any more creepy stuff. Recently, I have posted a story about a creep who stalked me for weeks when I was 15 until a school principal protected me. It was a cautionary tale I will one day teach my daughter. Do not give attention to all adults in, in order to not come off as rude. You might unwittingly encourage the creep. I have had many similar less creepy encounters like that one, but this second one stands up above others. I was 17 this time, waiting at a doctor's office to being checked up after a surgery. Another patient started talking to me. He was 22. I vividly remember his black spiky hair, blue denim clothes, and a very visible exotropia in one of his eyes, hidden behind thick glasses. He tried to make small talk about, so, why are you here? What kind of issues do you have? And stuff. I have avoided these questions, but all in all, I didn't mind the conversation. It was his turn before me, so I didn't expect to see him after. I have left the office. But there he was, waiting for me, with a freaking rose that he probably bought at a hospital kiosk. I was extremely surprised and super uncomfortable as he tried to give me the rose in a waiting room full of patients. He blurted out, uh, let's go outside. And we went and I started something like, look, thank you, but, and he got suddenly angry and threw the rose in the trash can and walked away, pretending not to see me anymore. I didn't stick around for him to change his mind and headed for a bus station. What is it with this bus station and the creeps? As I was waiting for a bus, I heard someone running. It was the blue denim guy. He joined me at the station and started talking about how I have offended him and that girls always do that to him. Learning from my previous experience, I have kept my mouth shut and avoided eye contact, trying to find someone I could join for safety. He kept going on about a girl who pretended to be interested in him and then revealed it to be a psychological experiment, which is the lamest excuse ever, and at the same time pointing out how hot she was, as if to make me feel like I should be thankful that he is paying attention to me, a less hot girl. I could tell that there's something wrong with him mentally, and while I was annoyed by him and also scared of him, I could not help but feel sorry for him. Some people are just born like this, and they don't learn at school how not to behave towards romantic interest. He then bluntly asked me to get coffee. I firmly said, no thank you, and his reaction was totally random. He said, I was looking for someone to start a family with and continue my legacy, and you have clearly wasted my time. And he turned on his heel and walked away, his nose stuck up to the sky. It was a totally bizarre counter. But there is something else that makes it creepy. Remember how I clearly knew his age? It's not because he told me. It's because I have seen him two years later in the news where they disclosed his age. Apparently, he planted a homemade bomb in McDonald's to somehow get back of the girl who rejected him. I grew up in a safe, beautiful part of my town. All of my neighbors were within five years of my age. There wasn't a moment I didn't have a friend to hang out with. We were even lucky enough to have a park within a couple blocks of our neighborhood. Given the safe nature of our area, we were all allowed to walk and spend time at the park alone. This thread made me remember the time my best friend and I were successful in fleeing an attempted kidnapping. We were around 10 years old and made our way up to the park per usual. 
This time we got a bad vibe and heard a man screaming, Hello! We were both as tiny as could be, and luckily fit under the 12-inch part of the playground where no one could see us. Within seconds of successfully making it under and hiding under this area, the man yelling appeared. We could see him, but he didn't see us, he said. I heard two girls playing. Where are you guys? Come on out. As he looked through the tubes, slides, and the rest of the playground set, we lucked out. He didn't find us. We have never been so silent in our lives. After a few minutes of him being gone, we made a run for it. We generally walked along the roads to the playground, but we were aware of shortcuts through other people's yards. This time we took a dash through our neighbor's yards. As soon as we hit a road again, a car pulled along. It was this man. He asked us to get in his car and that he would take us home since we were so young. We declined endlessly. We kept walking and he slowly followed us with his window down and begged us to get in and let him drive us. We eventually walked up to a random person's house to pretend it was one of ours. We understand now this wasn't the wisest idea, but we were 10 and all we knew was that he needed to get away from us. After pretending this house was ours and going to the front door, he left us alone. We made the dash to my real house. We never told our parents. We should have. We are now both 22. To this day, we both bring it up every now and then and discuss how poorly this could have gone and how we could have met a horrible fate.